Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob and today I shall be attempting to take on this Corgi Mini from Shabby to, well, keeping it Shabby really. Uh, this is a commission from a chap called Five uh, over in uh, Canada and approached me and said, Rob, you know, I really love the film, some kind of wonderful. Could you mimic the Mini that is in that movie? And I said, sure, I shall give it a try. And uh, actually recommended that I watch the film and yeah, that was the first thing I did. I, I kind of downloaded the film, watched it, great little movie, and uh, I would say the, the car is not like a, a massive focal point in the film, certainly in my opinion, it probably only has an, a minute in total of air time, uh, but it is, you know, it's it's certainly not forgetful, and uh, yeah, trying to stop, start, stop, start, flicking through the film, just to pick up little referencing points, uh, just to make this car as close as I possibly can, and I certainly do hope uh, that uh, you all like it five obviously included um, but anyway we should start by drilling down the center of the post I use a 1.6 millimeter uh, drill bit there and to remove the flange I use the four millimeter and to tap that hole um, I use an M2 tap I lubricate the tap because I have snapped it many times and I use the three-in-1 multi-purpose oil and a handy little screwdriver because the mini as it comes in here I have uh, screwed it so I'll, I'll unscrew that in a second but yeah this one has got a few little bits that we need to change today a few little bits that we'll remove and a few little bits that we'll add but uh, opening bonnet on this one nice little bit of uh, engine detail opening boot lid and then just an empty boot there yeah, she does read underneath, Corgi Toys, made in Great Britain. It's the BMC Mini Cooper. Um, it's the Cooper S, so it's the super fast one. But, uh, yeah, we'll remove this screw here. And then stay, start taking this one apart. Uh, quite a few bits to these cars. Not like the smaller scale where there's maybe three or four or five kind of uh, pieces. This has got yeah many many parts. But the wheels and axles there just fall out. A bit grubby. But they actually are kind of perfect really for the end result and a couple of the tires are a little bit flat spotted but again you know i don't mind that uh, hopefully five doesn't either i kind of see it as um you know comparing the the real film when you see the car driving around the tires are a little bit flat so it adds adds to the character Uh, this chrome piece here, we'll be painting it up. Basically, this uh, the chrome piece is kind of uh, acting like the bumpers, but on the actual car from the film, the bumpers are removed. So I need to come up with a, a solution for that. The interior here, we've moving front seats. Quite a nice little detail on this one, but we won't be using that part today. Trying to take out this uh, glass was a little bit of a pain, so I ended up doing it off camera. But the door's coming out here. Nice bit of detail as well on the inside. And I do detail that out later on. You may not actually see it, I don't remember, but uh, I painted the uh, the inside door handles and such. But yeah, there's the uh, steering wheel there and the little dash. Quite a few details we can highlight later on. It's at this stage do I consider leaving the boot and the bonnet in position, but on the uh, movie car the both the boot and the bonnet are a different color so ideally I really need to remove them 
it's always a pain because uh, they never really go back as well as what they come off with but you know these are not really going to be played with heavily anymore you know with the amount of hours and work that have gone into these they kind of just for show now but yeah trying to figure out how to remove this window section without breaking it with this one five was going to send me a uh, casting from Canada but I suggested if I was to get one locally it would be certainly more cost effective for him and I like these uh, lights thankfully I could just poke them out from the rear end without having to break them but yeah we have uh, now got the main casting here down into the bare shell we have no breakages so that's good I say you got the uh, couple of headlights there and I did manage to simply pop them out from the back just used a screwdriver just pushed them through and then the window section is in three pieces but we won't be using uh, those two so those all uh, kind of stay to one side but this piece here with the opening And then of course you've got the uh, boot and the bonnet there. That'll be a different colour to the main casting. And then you'll see that where I've taken out the boot and bonnet, there's been no real damage. Just loosened it up a little bit to pop it out. So let's get everything now for the foot long hot dog jar. Covered in boiling water. And then in comes a tablespoon of caustic soda. Give it a little swishy swish. And then we just put it to one side, let it do its job. This part here, like I mentioned, in the movie car, it doesn't have any bumpers at all. But because of the type of the casting or the style of the casting, if I was to remove these, then it would leave a large gap. So I had to remove as much as I could to make it look as if the bumper's been removed. So it will be in body colour. From that last point to this point, you wouldn't believe it, but it was about an hour just to kind of cut away the plastic, rub it down, and make it look as well, make it look perfect to be honest. Uh, I did break it, but it glues back together, no problem. And uh, yeah, so whilst I was doing that, you can see here the uh, caustic solution, solution, solution certainly doing its job, and all that paint there floating. So having just flushed it down the sink. Just going to give it a little uh, clean up. So there's the boot lid. All the paint removed. There's the bonnet, all the paint removed, so it looks like we've got whole paint removed on the doors too, same again for the base. And then lastly the body, so we do have a 100% paint removal today so that's uh, pretty exciting and we now go to the Dremel and get this uh, buffed out give you a little sample of the uh, roof section here
got the whole casting all nice and shiny ready for a bit of paint now on the movie car again it has some you know like a, a leather a roof on it and uh, this is where kind of my initial delay for getting around to doing this casting because I bought a bit of leather it and it was no good then I bought another little bit and that was no good and then I thought all right this is the one and it was a bit too thick so that was no good and this one we were nearly there but again just a little bit too thick for my liking and then just right fifth time lucky I must admit you know you buy one takes about a week for it to be delivered so there was about five weeks in between trying to get just the right bit of leverette or vinyl you know I wanted it to look right as best as I could so sometimes to wait for the uh, the right thing is just what's needed but anyway tidying up the plastics there and then I'm going to go to a bit of paint so we got the uh, black primer here I'll read out the some kind of wonderful um, the movie bit uh, Keith Nilsson an artsy high school outcast tries to land a date with popular girl Amanda Jones with some help from his tomboy best friend Watts um, or however his advances draw the air of Amanda's snobby ex-boyfriend Hardy Jens who makes plans to get even matters are further complicated when Watts realizes she likes Keith as as more than just a friend and tries to convince him to stop pursuing Amanda um, it's a good little film kind of a uh, romance drama from 1987 that is but I'd recommend it I think uh, Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 78% so that's pretty good going but anyway moving on to the paint I've used the Bayejo, uh just their premium airrush colours is uh, just their standard range solid colours I mixed up a now, when I was looking at the film and I was looking at pictures, it was kind of like a, a very pale, light blue stroke hint of green, and uh, that's where I try try to uh, aim the colour at because a, a few different shots that I was seeing had slight variances in colour. So I think I've got it to where it's uh, to where it should be. Uh, the bonnet and the uh, boot are like a beige colour. Now the I wasn't so sure about the boot. The bonnet is certainly beige, but the boot there is a split second where I could see that it was also in beige. So I was quite happy with that. Uh, both the doors are red, and again just made up this little bit of red here. Kind of holding the, I use little throwaway plastic shot glasses and holding up the paint to my computer screen, thinking, is that about right? You know. And I think it's uh, certainly in the ballpark. But anyway, it's now uh, a few days later. So we've got those wheels and that interior I've uh, done off camera, uh, added a few little details. Um, and I've gone over the whole thing with my Citadel uh, Nuln Oil just to kind of weather it. Um, the interior, again, is a flash of where I can tell that the interior is uh, beige, but the front seats are different. They're red and black, just like how I've painted it. Uh, polished up the front windscreen there. Same again with the little steering wheel painted it in uh, black and silver then went over it in the known oil the 
engine bay here was all in chrome, so I just detailed it out and then covered it in the Nolan oil again. So you got the car here, that bit of leverette on the top, uh, painted out. Now this uh, car doesn't have a grill, so I've kind of had to black out that front area. And then yeah, just rolled up the bit of lever for the top. Obviously the headlights are back in position. The base here, I do uh, detail the exhaust, but you won't see that, but it has been done. And then just this part, which is now body colour, to mimic that uh, the bumpers have been removed. You've got the beige bonnet and boot lid there, which I shall detail out. And then the red doors, they too get a little bit of a detail. Uh, and I'll do all that now off camera, but as a little reminder of what she looked like. This is the result. Uh, so around the front you can see where the grill was removed, the kind of uh, black behind that. There's a little uh, red emblem on the bonnet. Now in the film you don't see the right hand side of this car. So I've had to be a little bit, I guess, uh, creative on this side. But around the back you do have the beige boot lid there and then detail out the uh, the rest of it and then certainly on this side just to keep referring back to the movie referring back to the stills making sure the rust is all in the right places I think this looks pretty good five I hope you like it but anyway let me thank my amazing patrons, including brand new patron, Carsten Lambert. Thank you, mate. And for everybody else, I hope you did like this one. I hope you're all keeping safe. And I hope you'll uh, stick around for the next one.